What a transition. And so tragic. And the music has an innocence to it, almost like a childlike innocence, which is what Fiorina is. It's been some time since I've reacted to a Genshin Impact cutscene, though I've enjoyed playing through many of them with you in the past. And so today, we react to Fosalor Ultimate Sacrifice. Full cutscene from Genshin Impact, because the character of Fiorina has been so intriguing to me. I really wanted to continue to cover her story. If you've enjoyed our time together, please check out some of the other videos we've covered on this channel, including our World of Warcraft cinematic journey. All right, Mihoyo. Let's see what you cooked up for us today. Oh, there's clearly a big moment here. I love the music. I love the atmosphere. Oh, what's happening with the oratories? All right. I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. The death sentence. I love the cast of characters here. And this is it. The death sentence of Fontaine, right? Okay, we got Traveler. All right. No, I still need answers. Interesting, sort of like selfish response there. I like that. Oh, really nice shot. The clock is ticking. <gasps> no. Man, that's so sad. <clears throat> the tragedy of Urena here. Let's see how it plays out. What a cool set piece. Oh, and I love the music. Did you hear that instrumentation? Very mysterious. Look at the set. I love the floating stuff, and it looks almost like uh, a trial chamber or a stage audience. Yeah. Now, is this her true form? Wait a second. Cool. Sorry. Mm. That shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. No, the voice Who is are you? a different register. Uh, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Very official. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. Mm. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. The god. You know, the god. Fosalor. Why did you deceive us? A deception. Oh, wasn't my goal, Just like course. acting. Goodness, no. Acting is a deception. But I had to fool everyone else too. I if love I it. Was to stand any chance of deceiving it's the like heavenly a... principles. Oh, she went. Deceiving the heavenly principles. Cool. It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Yeah. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. Huh. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. A really nice shot here. And I, I was love that. Growing barnacles by the time I really, really a nice realized. placement of the characters and composition. There was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled. Oh, interesting. Possibly, at least. While saving everyone at the same time. A deception. I love it. <laughs> I'm a genius, it's, it's acting. I, I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Like what a cool through Although, line to have run through now, this whole culture and story. Hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation. The quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon. And not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans. I dare say she left me quite a, a new race. So is Fontaine left. a different, like, can they breathe <sighs> underwater or something? can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. Ah, a little so Greek. you were also once one of the Oceanids. Influence, love it. Transformed into a human by Egeria's hand. The original uh, nymphs. Yes, I was. In Greek mythology? I always dreamed of becoming human. I think there's about 3,000 of them. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After so true. a god, I love that. I separated my divinity from my body. Oh, and nice spirit, shot here. Yeah. Leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. Ah, oh, that's so sad, the though. You see before you now yeah. is that divinity, and the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. And what's gonna happen she to the human? Joy, sorrow, and everything in between. 
She could be as vain and conceited. Oh, the reflection here. Really cool choice there. The reflection of Fosalo. I love this background. I'd be using it in every shot. Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. So cool. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. Oh, so she did this as a part Do of her master still plan. Remember the final scene of the prophecy? Nice shot. This the is the sort of stuff I would be using alone, more, utilizing the environment. On her throne, in order that the prophecy might be fulfilled. That's cool. I invited Farina to be an actress, to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse cool. I placed on her. So long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Huh. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the opera house, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy. I love the double meaning of that. To create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy. Now, did you notice they put her out of focus in this shot? The background was in focus, showing that she's not the focus of, you know, her real identity. Is really cool choice. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. <sighs> so sad. It must have been torture for her. Like that's not her true been. self, yeah. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. Yes. <laughs> it's been 500 years. Oh, I love this shot too. She's been For playing sure, her part in the most it was a, unimaginably it was a lonely, long, yeah, there you go. unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. Jeez. I like the loneliness aspect uh, in the shots that they showed so her. Even for completely Rina isolated. The truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? She couldn't, for the deception. Yes, it had to be yeah. done. To deceive the <sighs> heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. So interesting. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, wow. Fontaine would have been doomed she to the most tragic fate. She put a puppet fate. copy of herself. That so cool. Trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? The lighting here is really that cool, is too. There's a warmth to it. Thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. Right, right. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine. Yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. Oh. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. <laughs> It now seems that that person was you, uh, hidden within the machine all alone. Am I right? And then I became one what? with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Interesting. Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is... In fact, a device created to kill the god of justice. Oh no. I beg your pardon. There's a sword hovering over her oh, this whole time. You have it. And to be more precise, not only will the oratrice take down the god of justice, it will also take down the divine Whoa. throne upon which she has been placed. Just destroy the system? That's actually really cool. I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? Wow. My work over these last 500 years Time to has atone. been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratrice. But really, mm. some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was <laughs> ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had 
to be accumulated <sighs> to enact this death sentence. Wild. So that's a solution that was just all a part of your plan then. Both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, Ooh, cool. could have sustained Fontanians for millennia. The scales of justice. Had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the oratories. But <sighs> only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia. And breaking through the institution that is a is massive lore dump. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor. But for in a Hydro game with this Arcon. much long story, like you probably have to do this once in a while. In other words, but this I do love was it. all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. The Hydro Dragon? <sighs> but. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah, it's like an anime episode's length of lore. Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? Ah, poor Nibelette. The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. Yeah, he's gonna take over the power, isn't he? This is the face you make. What a bittersweet feeling. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years. It's just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. And he spent so much time with humans, like he's. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, emotion I'm is rubbed off. At how well my deception worked. <laughs> it was a clean deception, but I love that it's it's acting. You know, the the double meaning has been so cool throughout this whole thing and the whole culture of Fontaine Hydro opera. Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I like the music too. It's kind of tragic, say, but it has a my rights, has a resigned to feeling to it. Heavenly principles themselves were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Long the way she talks is so like Millet, inhuman. I like it. Judge in our land. Uh, it's cool. You regain <clears throat> power as an elemental sovereign. <sighs> what verdict shall you pass upon us? That's so cool. So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Udex, mm. I see now that that was your idea too. At last. His outfit's so cool. I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, so he's gonna get his closure I was interested here. in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought yeah. about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. Beautiful. You are a devious one, Fosalor. What a great character. Maybe that was part of her plan. As they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. Huh. Love it. Really was like a genius <clears throat> move. Okay, here we go. The shots have become the more filmic. Of my execution is almost oh, here. the stage lighting. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. Man, what a... I know I may not sound it, but... What a powerful image. Faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Hmm, sad. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. Wow. Is she going to perform? This is going to be a performance, right? <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. No. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Yeah, the lighting is really nice here and this kind of pre-rendered. Wow. I love that it's going to be a performance and it's so bittersweet. This is it. This is the performance that has, you know, oh, what a transition. And so tragic. And the music has an innocence to it, almost like a childlike innocence, which is what Fiorina is. That's her whole consciousness is, you know, bereft of understanding and, and having to kind of suffer in ignorance. It has that childlike innocence, but now you have the choir coming in, which feels more like godlike and understanding. And she bows out in her final performance. And there it is. What remains is the human... The human aspect of herself. I love that she bows out and is proud of her 500 years of performance there. Really, really well. Oh, that's a great shot. And look at that, sort of the 
personification of, uh, of water is what that was, so it makes sense. Wow, what a gambit. Oh, the music is so tender here. Thank you, Frisa. What's gonna happen, Farina? Oh no. This feels like a death. Please live happily as a human. Oh yes. Just as I wish we could. Oh, that's so sad. The immortal and being the mortal, you know? It's an interesting concept. Yes, the music's ramping up to me. This is, you know, the male choir here is, is, is him finding the resolve to do his duty it, amidst the tragedy. It's beautiful. Powerful. Oh, great shot. The analogous colors. It's just like we talked about in World of Warcraft. The analogous colors punching through. Vibrant. And that's it. Oh, man, I'm getting Final Fantasy Advent Children vibes. FF7 Advent Children. The, the healing rain comes down upon the people to cure them. What a beautiful, uh, beautiful ending there. Yeah, I love it. That This whole sequence was fantastic. It was really fantastic. I love the stage lighting, but it's also, you know, sort of like the markedness of her demise. It's it's the almost like the target of the sword that's going to come down on her. Um, and she's performing, you know, amidst that tragedy and amidst that death sentence. And then she bows. And what I, what I love about it is she says that, you know, even the gods fear death. Perhaps it's the one thing we share with humans. But notice not for one moment does she falter in her extreme, you know, uh, dedication to her purpose, to her plan, which is like a godlike aspect, right? Um, not even once. She bows out, doesn't show fear. And there's that moment where you see the close-up of her eyes that, you know, maybe... Curtain call has come. Maybe, maybe there's a slight flicker of fear in the shot, but you know, you don't really see it um, because she is, she is not human. She kind of just, you know, closes her eyes and, and <laughs> washes it away. But yeah, I think the use, the use of music here again is a really, a lot of a standout. Like again, this sort of childlike sort of um, playful, like it is a play. It's fun. It's a dance. And then, you know, you have the traveler here, like. Uh, observing this, like, what is this reality that's being witnessed right here? How much of this the, the travelers see of this whole conversation? Um, perhaps it was the whole thing because, you know, as the player, you're meant to understand this, and maybe the travelers as well. But I love it. It's so whimsical, this whole thing. There's a, there's a feeling of, uh, ah, and that duality of human and divine is so well voiced. The choir, yeah. And that choir, like, it's so meaningful. Like, the choir comes in for this little section. Right when it transitions back to her, to Fosalor. And you have this little performance from the choir, which feels divine. And then it cuts out. It's, it's like the final, the final moment of being divine. I think that's really beautiful. And, I mean, what's he going to do against that? It was kind of implied that it's like a very powerful force as would need to be to destroy divinity hence why she built it up for 500 years and then that's it you know the hat remains the the innocence the the suffering the humanity right that's what it is to be human it reminds me of a fantastic fantastic line from kingdom hearts 3 um where it's essentially the idea of is without you know i'm paraphrasing here uh you know it is human to feel pain like pain is is to be human and it's like, wow, but how much strength it must be to be a human. And I think I see that idea voiced very well here. Um, this is what happens when you're human, you know? Beaten down and, and, and broken at times. We all are. But that's what it means, you know? To be impermanent beings. Live happily. So now I'm so curious what happens to Furina after this. And, uh... <sighs> We'll have, we'll have to wait and see, I suppose. But yeah, really, really well done. This was this was cool. It was like an anime episode <laughs> length uh, cutscene, which is really interesting to, to to enjoy with you guys. I really thought it was awesome. Um, like I said, sort of for pacing reasons, it was a massive lore dump, like kind of right at the end of this. But 
they kind of had to say a lot of that. So I, I, I think it was great. I think it was well done. And then this was the payoff, this amazing cutscene at the end. And sort of, again, the pre-rendered grandiosity. Hereby declare. What a great, what a great thing. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've been enjoying. Uh, we've been putting out a lot of content on the channel the last few days and uh, want to continue to do it. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. And, um, you know, if you want to join us on our World of Warcraft journey, we're working on that. We've got Final Fantasy content on the way. I'm still working on that uh, video essay. It's just taking a long time. And uh, I can't wait to uh, share all this stuff with you guys. So thank you very much. And let me know what you think in the comments of this amazing scene. See you guys.